friends, welcome to the All Canadian Reptile Girl. I'm Annalise and today we are talking garter snakes. In most parts of North America, many people's first encounter with a snake in the wild is very likely to be a garter snake, like right here. And because they are somewhat ubiquitous, it is easy to just dismiss them as, oh, it's just a garter snake. But that really does not give them the credit that they deserve. Garter snakes are awesome. So awesome, in fact, that I gave them the top spot in my coolest five Canadian snakes. That was about a year ago. They are my favorite genus of snakes, and today I'm going to break down, just for you guys, six reasons why they should probably be your favorite too. Let's go. All right, garter snakes. Oh boy, this brings me back. This topic was actually my very first full video on my channel, but seeing as it only has like 300 views after more than like the past two years, you probably didn't know that, did ya? But that's okay, it was awful. Don't, do not go watch it. I'm not even like shilling to, oh, don't go watch it. I'm serious. The pauses are awful, the timing, awful. The sound. Don't forget your teeth. Don't, I was about to say, my teeth! Uh, just don't. Because garter snakes are so common, many people usually dismiss them as, oh, it's just a garter snake. On today's episode, we'll be learning why garter snakes are anything but just a snake. Should I maybe just remove that video? It's so cringy. No, I think you should leave it. What well, people, because it's part of the journey. People see how you've improved. I don't think people should have to watch that. All right, let's start with the garter snake's first superpower, because that's what I used in my first garter snake video. So we're going with that theme again today, and that is variety. So you've already met Roy, my plains garter snake, but let's have you meet Jim, my coast garter snake. Ta-da. And Dwight, one of my three valley garter snakes, who's a good girl. You're doing very good today, sweet. And then, of course, there is Cobra, one of my 18 Lake Chapala garter snakes. She's a good mom. Yes, you are. You're a very good mom. While they are all garter snakes, they are all very different in appearance, temperament, and size. <sighs> With the valleys, they are bright red. That's Dwight right here. With the bright red and the beautiful yellow stripe, all being contrasted by the black, she is and her tank mates are very excitable. They also like to kind of helicopter poop on you. That's when they poop or musk whilst helicoptering their tail, their absurdly, absurdly long tail, just to ensure even application of their butt soup. Then we have the plains garter snakes, the little tiny boy who is a little bit more drab than the rest, but they are very curious and active and shameless about begging for food. Then we have the bigger coast garter snake right in the middle here. The one of, she, he is behaving. They have this beautiful rusty red color and the bright dorsal stripe that's like a pale yellow. They are super laid back. They're basically corn snakes trick or treating as garter snakes. And then lastly, we have the beautiful Lake Chapala garter snake, Cobra right here, the biggest. And they have this beautiful, gorgeous blue that's not actually blue. Check out my video on these guys to find out what I mean by that. They are a little shy and really floppy and twisty. Holding one of these guys is like holding a water snake, which makes sense. They are mostly aquatic and arboreal. Anyway, my point is that I only have four species here and all are vastly different. Stop. There are over 80 other species and subspecies of garters across North and Central America. Like many other snakes, some garter species will have different morphs. So whatever your preference, there is probably a garter snake to match. We've got white garters, beige garters, gray garters, red, yellow, brown, blue. We've even got hypermelanistic garters here in Ontario that are almost jet black, which I suppose is helpful in absorbing every last bit of heat from the sun. Pretty handy for snakes living in the frozen wasteland of Canada. You want a small garter snake? No problem, you can get one. You want a big one? Go for a Lake Chapala garter snake, which might actually rival the giant garter snake as the largest garter species. We're saying garter snake way too often right now. 
Now, there are some garter snake species that you can't own legally, and there are some places where it is illegal to own garters, either specific native species or outright. But generally speaking, you're spoiled for choice when it comes to finding the garter snake of your dreams or the one that is right for you. Okay, next awesome garter snake trait is adaptability. These guys can thrive just about anywhere. You can find them in forests, grassy plains, deserts, mountains, jungles, swamps. You might even see them behaving like water snakes hunting underwater or along the shorelines, like the Chipotle garter snakes. Geographically, they can be found as far south as Costa Rica, and apart from Hawaii, they are in every US state, including Alaska, which coincidentally is the valley garter snake, which can be found from California all the way up the coast to Alaska. Talk about being in a number of different uh, temperatures. They are Canada's most common snake found in every province except Newfoundland and way up into one of our three Northern Territories to the Southern shores of the Great Slave Lake and the Northwest Territory where the hottest part of summer barely cracks 20 degrees Celsius and the average annual temp is zero degrees. That's freezing. Literally. Garter snakes can survive this far north because they are extremely cold tolerant. Out of more than 10,000 reptile species in the world, only the viviparous lizard in Europe and Asia and the European adder can handle temperatures as low as the northernmost species of garter snake. These snakes are so cold tolerant that you might even see them sunning themselves or slithering on the snow in early spring. If you're lucky, you might even catch them taking a drink from a melting snowbank. The key to their ability to handle sub-zero temperatures is in the presence of cryoprotectants in their blood. When the temperature drops, the amounts of chemicals like glucose, glycogen, and glycerol in their blood and organs change to prevent the formation of fatal ice crystals. Basically, these northern noodles have antifreeze in their blood. How cool is that? The garter's ability to adapt and survive and thrive in such a huge range is probably their most powerful superpower and part of what makes them so amazing. The next incredible trait is the garter snake's social nature. Snakes are generally solitary creatures, unless they are mating or maybe eating each other, Kelly King snake. Snakes rarely interact. If you do happen to find a couple of snakes together, it's most likely that they've both just happened to find an ideal spot to bask, hide, or hunt. They are effectively competing for a resource, unless they are garter snakes. You may have heard of the famous Narcisse snake dens in Manitoba, where thousands of thousands of these guys, not these, not the specific species, but of garter snakes, come out of brumation together in the spring to warm up and start mating. Seeing this phenomenon in person is a dream of mine. We had actually planned to go there in the spring of 2020, but then the spring of 2020 came along, and we all know what happened then, eh? While it is the most famous example, Manitoba is not the only place where this occurs. They often gather in large numbers in communal dens all over their range. Now, garters aren't the only species that brumate in communal dens. For example, rattlesnakes, they do something similar. But for garters, it's not just about gathering for hibernation or mating. Garter snakes use complex pheromones and body language to communicate with and identify each other all the time. With my garter snakes, they really seem to find comfort in having a friend with them for handling sessions. There are some really interesting studies on the social behavior in garter snakes. They have found that in the wild, some garters prefer to be solitary, but others will pair up or form a small group to roam together, basically. When the established groups were split up, the garters would either continue on alone or find a new partner or partners to hang out with. And here's where it gets super sweet. Scientists found that when their old partners were reintroduced even after months or years apart, the original partnership would often reform and they would resume the previous cooperative behavior. Those that had formed new partnerships often integrated their previous partners in with their new ones. So think about that for a minute. These animals with teeny tiny little brains can not only recognize snakes they know, but can remember their friends after years apart. Just, that just makes my heart happy. They have best friends. Also, that is one of the reasons why if you do cohab garter snakes, which you should, um, it should be at least three garters because there is a chance that one of them might not like one garter 
And if there are only two in there and they don't like each other, they're not going to be happy. And then they're going to be sad because they don't have a friend. Whereas if there's a third one, that'll bridge the gap. Perhaps the most adorable trait that garter snakes possess is that, unlike most snakes that lay eggs, garter snakes give live birth to the most adorable little noodles imaginable. Bearing live young is not completely unique to garter snakes. There are several other species that do it as well. Boas, anacondas, which technically are boas, so boas, <laughs> rattlesnakes, and a few others, but garter snake babies are the cutest. I mean, I could just be biased but okay so check out my baby like chapala garter snakes look at them they're so tiny and cute okay but you really want to see something cute look at these little bug-eyed freaks these are my plains garter snakes when they were only four days old the day we got them they're so cute they're so little bug-eyed look at their little eyes they don't fit in their head <laughs> Now, if you guys want to see updates on some of my breeding projects, like my Lake Chapalas, some behind the scenes news and footage, early access to my videos, and a bunch more, I would like to invite you to check out my Patreon, where you will see all sorts of cool stuff that comes along with supporting my channel. Thanks in advance for checking that out. Oh, and one more thing. If it's not too much trouble, would you mind hitting that little like button down there? That also really helps out my channel and helps it to spread to other people who might want to learn about garter snakes. So thank you all so much. Okay, back on track. Um, next up is Venom. Yep, Venom. That might surprise some of you who have probably been told that garter snakes are non-venomous and they were legitimately thought to be for a couple hundred years. But in the early 2000s, it was discovered that they do in fact produce a neurotoxic venom. Unlike vipers or lapids that actively inject venom through hollow fangs, garters are rear fanged venomous, which means that they don't inject venom at all, but kind of let it ooze into the wounds as it chows down. Now, don't worry, I am perfectly safe handling my garter snakes, and you would be too with a pet garter or even one from the wild. Their venom is extremely mild and certainly not a threat to humans in any way. It seems to be designed to work best on amphibians, which we are not, and makes up a lot of a garter snake's diet. Unlike other colubrids like king snakes and corn snakes, garter snakes don't really constrict their prey to dispatch it before eating it. They usually just kind of chomp on their dinner and steadily overpower it, eating it alive. Their venom with a sedative effect on their prey makes that job like a lot easier and I hope a little less painful for the prey. So for the non-snake people out there, if there is a surefire way to annoy a snake person, it is to ask if a snake is poisonous. You will very likely get a lecture to the effect of snakes are venomous, not poisonous. If it's venomous, then it bites you and you die. If it was poisonous, then you bite it and you die. Yada yada, you know. But asking if a garter snake is poisonous is actually a very reasonable question. Because you know what? Um, you know what? Um, you know what? Um, you know what? Garter snakes are poisonous too. At least sometimes. It depends on what they are eating. Garter snakes are able to eat toxic prey that would make other predators sick or even dead, like salamanders, newts, and toads, or frogs even sometimes, and some other poisonous insects. Not only can garter snakes safely eat these creatures, but they can even take those toxins and through a process called dietary sequestration can hijack those compounds to make themselves poisonous to eat. Need eh? If you want to learn about how all that works, I'm not gonna tell you here, because I did a video all about poisonous snakes. You can go check that out. You know where it is on my channel. Or if I put a card up. You're welcome. Make your life easier. So the last garter snake superpower is my favorite and it might seem a little bit weird at first, but stay with me. Next up is that they are just so common. Sounds weird, right? I started this video citing this as the reason why people dismiss them, but I think that it is the absolute best thing about them. My first introduction with a snake, heck, probably my first 20 interactions with a snake was catching a garter snake, and that started my love of reptiles. I got bit. You got bit, let's see. I know that there are countless other reptile enthusiasts whose love of snakes stemmed from catching 
these guys out in the wild or their garden or at a park, just like me. Garter's accessibility presents a chance for people to safely learn about how awesome snakes and reptiles are, that they are something to appreciate and learn about and respect and protect, not fear. To me, that's pretty cool. So I think I've given you some compelling reasons to think that garters are pretty stinking cool, but what are they like as pets? Well, having 27 <laughs> pet garter snakes, to be fair, most of them are babies that I will be selling. I think that I'm pretty qualified to tell you what they are like. Awesome. They are awesome. Depending on the species, they may be a little bit more likely to musk on you than some other species, but with a little bit of consistent gentle handling, you can easily fix that. And they are wonderful snakes to handle, to cuddle with, to hang out with. Basically, garter snakes check all the boxes on the common items for what makes a good pet snake. Appearance, ease of care, level of danger, which is basically non-existent, temperament, those kinds of things. But there are three things in particular that I think sets garter snakes apart from most other pet snakes. One, their social behavior. Actually, I'm gonna say their social requirement. Garters do best with tag mates, so just make sure that your garter snake has a friend and trust me, you will not regret it. Nothing, and I mean nothing, is cuter than seeing your snake cuddling just with its friend and checking in on each other. Sometimes it even looks like they are playing together. It's adorable. Which actually leads me to my second item. Two, their activity level. When you look at most pet snakes and you look into their enclosures, there is a fair chance that you are not going to see them. Snakes spend a lot of time out of sight in their hides. And that's okay, who doesn't like to take a nap? The opposite is true of garter snakes. They hate sleep, they're insomniacs. No, just kidding. If I look in on my garter snakes enclosure and I don't see them out, my first thought is that something is wrong or that they've escaped because they are almost always out basking, cruising, climbing, or swimming. Sometimes even curiously checking out the cleanup crew. When they see me peeking in at them, looking through the glass, or when I open up the tank, most come right up to see what I'm up to or to beg for food. Which leads me to number three, food. See what I did there? I led you into it. Generally, you feed your pet snakes whole prey, most commonly rodents. It's complete nutrition for most snakes. They are easy to get and relatively cheap to buy, and that's great. But feeding whole rodents, live or frozen thawed, can be a bit of an issue for some people. I completely get it, honestly. Good news, though. Good news, everyone. In addition to rodents, garters will happily eat night crawlers, chicken hearts, and other bits of chicken, frog meat, and fish, although you need to be careful about which kind of fish you get, as some are high in thymine, which is toxic to garter snakes. You can provide your garter snake a complete nutrition without feeding rodents, is what I am saying. I did actually a garter snake nutrition guide that you can check out here. So if you are one of the many people out there who would rather not feed rodents to their pets, garters might just be the pet snake for you. Okay, I think that's enough. You probably get it by now that garter snakes are amazing and they really do have a special place in my heart and I could seriously talk about them all day. Hopefully though, I have done a good enough job of showing you how awesome garter snakes are so that the next time you see one out in the wild, you don't think, nah, it's just a garter snake. And instead think, wow, look at that amazing garter snake. Before I go, I'd like to thank my patrons on Patreon. Here's some now. I don't know where they're gonna be. So should I move here or here? Or should they just go in front of me? Or there. should I go like down and they go up here? There. Here? No, there. Oh. There. You want me to go here? Yes. Okay, there. there we go. Now, I'm filming this weeks in advance, so I don't know how many there are gonna be by that time I edit and publish this. But anyways, thank you so much for your support. It really does mean a lot to me. And it is going to be a huge help for some of the big plans that I have for 2022. Thanks again, patrons, and thank you for everyone watching. And until next time, remember to nurture all nature. Bye. Do not watch the old garter snake video. No. And because they are somewhat ubiquitous, <laughs> ubiquitous, it might be. Ubiquitous. No, I, I said know. it. I said it. Okay. It's Just ubiquitous.
just go on. If I got it wrong, it's something cute that I said. If not, I got it right. Ubiquitous. Ubiquitous. Already, eh? Ubiquitous. No. <laughs> Ubiquitous. 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 I said it! Good. Say Ubiquitous. It Ubiquitous. 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 <laughs> now I'm getting it wrong. Okay, we have a couple cuts. I'll just go, and so now because they're somewhat, and ubiquitous. then I'll give a pause, and then I'll try to say it again, and if not, if I don't, if I don't, if I, <laughs> if I get it wrong, we give you one of the many other tries, okay? What's your word? <laughs> Ubiquitous. 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 Okay. And because they are somewhat ubiquitous, <laughs> this is what happens when I have three chocolate covered coffee beans before filming. Orange glob is here. There we go.